thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. It's been an active weekend and week beginning as Israeli security forces make several new arrests in connection to Palestinian terror. Late Saturday night, four Palestinians from Beit Fajar were arrested. Two suspects were detained for manufacturing improvised weapons. The other two were arrested for throwing Molotov cocktails at the Jewish settlement of Migdal Oz. There have been several arrests in the Beit Fajar area since earlier this month when a large weapons stockpile was found and interrogations led to the admission of an existing weapons-making group. Later last night, two more Palestinians of East Jerusalem were arrested for transferring intelligence to the Palestinian Authority. The two were accessing telecommunications databases available to them through their work. The police have not said what was passed to the PA. Finally, Clashes erupted this morning in Nablus as Palestinian rioters attacked an IDF envoy providing protection to religious Jews on their way to Joseph's tomb. One Palestinian was reportedly injured in the foot during riot dispersal methods. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is accusing President Barack Obama's administration of playing a direct part in formulating and pushing Friday's UN resolution against West Bank settlements. David Keyes told Fox News on Sunday that Israel has, quote, ironclad information on the U.S. government's participation in the landmark vote. He said sources in both the Arab world and internationally clearly indicate that this was a deliberate push by the United States, and in fact they helped create the resolution in the first place. Speaking yesterday at his weekly cabinet meeting, Netanyahu said, from the information we have, we have no doubt that the Obama administration initiated the vote, stood behind it, coordinated on the wording, and demanded it be passed. UN Security Council Resolution 2334 was passed by a 14-0 vote after the United States, in a rare and momentous step, abstained on the vote. The abstention enabled the adoption of the first UN resolution since 1979 to condemn Israel over its settlement policy. Netanyahu said that the United States' actions at the UN were in complete contradiction to the traditional American policy that was committed to not trying to dictate terms for a permanent agreement. Last night, he held a 40-minute meeting with U.S. Ambassador to Israel Dan Shapiro for clarifications on the issue. In just 140 characters or less, the Defense Minister of Pakistan made a major threat against Israel in response to a fake news article he believed to be real. Pakistani Defense Minister Khawaja Muhammad Asif made the response acting against an alleged Israeli comment by former Defense Minister Moshe Ya'alon. The supposed Ya'alon comment was regarding presumptive Pakistani interference in Syria against ISIS. Khawaja tweeted that Israel should remember that Pakistan is a nuclear state too. Israel has reassured Pakistan that the comment was fake, but those watching the story unfold are left stunned at the exchange. Israel has never confirmed nor denied the existence of an Israeli nuclear arsenal, nor have they ever threatened a nuclear attack outright. For the Pakistani defense minister, however, this is not the first time he has used such dangerous rhetoric. Asif threatened India with a nuclear strike just last September. Firefighters in Haifa gained complete control of the fire at the Haifa Bay refineries earlier this morning, after 15 firefighting crews worked through the night to cool the area. Fire investigators suspect a technical failure or human error during maintenance work at the refineries was the cause of the blaze. The inferno sent orange flames and thick black smoke curling into the air above the northern port city, endangering other installations at the industrial complex. The crews used firefighting foam to suppress the fire, which broke out Sunday at Haifa's oil refinery complex. Members of the Environmental Protection Ministry measured a low concentration of air particles, indicating that the pollution from the fire is not hazardous to the population. The Haifa Bay area is home to some of the heaviest industry in the country, and residents there have long been fearful that such an incident could have endangered the city. Orthodox Jews and Bahraini Muslims celebrated the Festival of Lights in the tiny Gulf Kingdom of Bahrain this week, with Jews and Muslims reveling in a video that has since gone viral. Here you see kefiyah wearing Bahrainis singing and dancing to Hasidic music with Orthodox Jews to mark the first night of Hanukkah. The party was reportedly hosted by American Jewish millionaire Laser Shiner, who invited members of the local community. Bahrain's King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa held the first Hanukkah celebration in the country since 1948, last year. Bahrain, the only Arab Gulf state that has a synagogue, had a Jewish population of some 1,500 Jews in 1948. After the declaration of the State of Israel, many Jews left, 
and most of those who remained fled after the 1967 Six-Day War. Today, there are less than 50 Jews remaining in the country. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.